Hello, my name is Nigel Griffiths. I work in Power Systems Advanced Technology Support in Europe. In this video about AIX in focus, we now got to the subject of LKU or Live Kernel Update. This series is for AIX systems administrators, and we're assuming you have a basic understanding of user level commands for AIX Linux or Unix generally. But no, this is actually an advanced topic, so it's only for experienced AIX systems administrators. If you're somebody that's dabbling or you've just come over from Linux and you're not really sure what's going on, don't try this operation. What I recommend you do is you call RBM and we get lab services there on site and they work with you to do the prereq checks, make sure your systems are in good condition, go through the details on how to do this and probably sit there in a couple of days working through the first couple of AX updates. These guys have a lot of experience and they'll pass on that experience to you while they're there. Before we go any further, let's look at some of the big prerequisites. This is a feature of AX 7.2. Whenever we talk about this, everybody says yes, but surely that will go to AX 7.1. In my humble opinion, very unlikely. At this point in time, I'm recording this in 2020, AX 7.2 has been out for six years, and we don't really want to encourage people to use older versions of AX. In fact, in fact AX 7.1 goes end of marketing next year in the plan. So there are other higher priority features for the kernel development team and they'll be working on AX 7.2. Also, if we did do it, you'd have to have an upgrade with an outage, a reboot, to get to a kernel that would avoid a reboot. You can see the obvious logical problem in there. And by the time you've done that, well, AX 7.1 will not be in prime use anymore. The next important one is pure virtual LPAS. So you've got no physical devices in it. And it's LPM ready, for example. That's a good way of testing it if you're pure virtual. So there's virtual networks and virtual storage. And you also have to have a couple of spare dual path disks available for live kernel update to use. Next, to save any confusion, I want to make it clear that LKU is LU. The AX kernel developers tend to call this LU, and they'll have that on the name of their presentations, for example. Most techies, we might call this AIX LKU to make it obvious what they're talking about, but these are fundamentally the same thing. Note this is not related to the virtual IO server shared storage pool, where the virtual disks are called logical units, or LU. So here are the marketing slides for LKU. It's updating the AX kernel without a reboot of the live running kernel, which you might think is impossible, but we can do it. The benefits are then not rebooting AIX, then your application doesn't really have any downtime and none of the users of the service complain about having an outage. This allows us to apply AIX technology levels and service packs and PTFs and even iFixes under the covers without interrupting the service. He's actually using some WPAR technology, workload partition technology. You don't need to know that. You never actually touch it. It's just using some of the underlying technology that we've had for some time. A little of the history of Life Kernel Update. I actually heard rumors of it about three years before 2015 when it first came out about this marvelous technology they were working on. In 2015 it came out but it would only handle iFixes and uh, we tried it and it worked fine and we were really pleased with it but that's not really the main problem. It wasn't until 2016 that they actually supported the PTS, the service packs and at last the technology levels. So this was a big improvement to living with your AIX and never having to take it down. Then through those years up to 2020 Every year we got new features. This isn't a you know, once delivered, stop working on it product. This is continuing to be a very major important benefit of AIX that you don't see perhaps with other operating systems in the Unix fold. Not going to go through the details. I'll show you where to get more information about these. But the last one in here, we're Oracle certified. So the Oracle's agreed that we're allowed to do this with a running live database on top. Of course you don't do it in your busiest hour of the year, but uh, it works quite happily. Also the developers are pleased to say that Oracle changed no lines of code. It was just a testing thing to get through, um, but that proves how reliable LKU is. So here's a high level, how does LKU work? Well the first thing up in here we have a copy of AIX. We're going to back it up. We've got some disks in here, let's just say this is the root VG. We can ignore the other data VGs with your application data in it. They're just going to move across as you do 
the upgrades. We need some extra disk or disks in here to make copies of the root VG. Then when you run the LKU command, use the alternative disk install and install the changes you need for your upgrade at this point. Or you could up do the upgrade yourself and it's only use the LKU to actually activate the new kernel. Then we break off this disk and put it into a new AIX partition. Next phase was we're going to copy the running applications, uh, processes and everything going on in memory on top of AIX will actually be copied over to that new copy of AIX. It's using something called LAM. This is live application mobility which is coming from the WPAR technology. Once that's completed we now have the same set of applications running on the updated kernel on the new logical partition. So then we stop the original partition and you have your updated AIX running. Something that's difficult to show on that original diagram is that we actually make a mirror of your original AIX root VG and this is then moved into your new partition. Now as you should take perhaps two backup copies of your original AIX this is like an emergency third parachute, just in case. So here's the outline for the live kernel update process. You're going to read the LQ documentation and the best practice. I've got information on those coming up in a second. We're going to back up, perhaps clone or snapshot our root VG disks. Then we're going to back it up again. This is an important system if you're trying to do live kernel updates then perhaps you're going to use a MAXISB and take it off to your NIM server. Then we're going to do some preparation. If you use LPM validate from your HMC, well, that will prove a whole lot of things are ready to go and highlight things that you perhaps need to correct. Also, it's good to have all those paths to your disks checked. So LS path command, just type that in and it will just tell you if all your paths are good. If not, clean them up. You can create a little file called LV, I presume that stands for live update.data, and that has some details of the spec disk for example that you want it to use. That's if you're using the HMC. If you're using the PowerVC, well they'll go and create those resources and add them to your logical partition. Then you need to authenticate because we're going to clone off into a new logical partition that's going to be created by the command under the covers and so you'll have to authenticate either with your HMC or your PowerVC server. Next up there's a preview mode of running the command. This is actually a general purpose install command. For example it sits behind the install p command but we're going to call it with kp. p is for preview and it'll go through all the dozens and dozens of checks that it's going to make before it actually tries to do the kernel update. Once you're happy that you're passing all those tests then you can actually execute the update taking off the minus p option if you do get into problems or you get it stuck, then there's a new command out that's available in higher versions of AX 7.2. I think it's TL3 and 4. This CLV update command will help you. Although if you do get stuck, I suggest you involve AX support and they'll talk you through that. So let's go into the real deep details of LKU. Well, actually, uh, no, we're not going to do that. This video has set the scene, but there are other videos and information that cover the deep details, and they're already existing, so I don't want to duplicate all that. Now, I got very, very lucky. The day before I started creating this video, I was on the virtual technical universities and everybody calls it tech you now and there's a talk recorded yesterday from two of the gurus in live kernel update technology and honestly i couldn't do better than what they covered so i'm going to give you a link in the youtube page to go and find that this is what you're looking for ax live update best practices from grover davison and chris Gibson. So here's a who's who in live kernel updates. Well, Dave Sheffield is a very senior member of the AX kernel development team here at IBM, and he was actually the LKU architect working on it many years before it actually became out. I only mention him because normally he doesn't get exposed to the wild world very much, um, because there is still a video that he made early on that's uh, available out on YouTube that shows them running an Oracle benchmark while doing an, an LKU operation. Carl Burnett is a top man in AIX, I tend to call him Mr. AIX these days, a distinguished engineer. He goes to some of the technical universities and again gives lots of uh, talks on LKU. You can probably find those if you go looking. Now the ones I'm really talking about are at the bottom here. Chris Gissom is Lab Services in Australia. Lots of practical experience and in the video that I'm going to point you at, he goes through his 
these 15 rules to get a, a live kernel update working well first time. He also shares the session with Grover Davison. To start the video, Grover Davison goes to some of the, the basics. Grover Davison, very senior member of the AX support group. I call him level 5 support, and I know there's no one better to look after my critsits. So I have three slides on where to go to get more information. Just out, the new AX Enhanced Sense Redbook. Pretty good read. Um, for all the latest things in AIX, for LKU, look at uh, sections 1.1 and 1.5, about 11 pages worth of the basics, and then what's new. Here's the link to the red books. You could probably go and find that yourself. I'll put the link actually in the YouTube page for this video, so you can click on it and go there. For LKU, the actual official documentation is in Knowledge Center as normal, but this is the required reading before you actually give it a live go. So there's a top level article, prereqs, restrictions, and the best practice is in here. Again, find the links on the YouTube page. And finally, the content I really, really recommend, it's the IBM Tech Talk that just happened in May 2020. The link at the top, again, I'll put that in the YouTube page for this video. You will need to register for access to that. Sorry about that, but that's the way things are. And, and I'm a little bit worried that uh, this is IBM. It's been moved. They may take the web page down at some point in the future. But nearly the same content is available on the Power Systems virtual user group. So Chris goes through all the same uh, slides. Uh, you'll miss out on the Grover talking about what's happened recently. But again, that's a useful place to go and have a look at the same content. So do one or the other. But on YouTube, of course, you don't need to register. Also, if you prefer to have more of a, a written document, an article about the things, Chris has put the same content into a PDF file so you could print it out and, and tick it as you go through the various checklists and his 15 recommendations on getting your live kernel update to work first time. So that's it for this video on LKU, uh, an advanced feature, but very, very useful in keeping your applications up all the time. How about telling your user departments that you don't actually have to take their application down for the next 10 years, say? If you've liked this video, you learned something, give us a thumbs up, please. And then if you want to subscribe, then you'll be told the next time I upload a video. Thanks for watching.